Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Max Lupo from the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library. In today's Tinker Shop, we're going to learn how to design a pencil holder using Tinkercad. All right, let's get started. And so the first thing to do would be to go to tinkercad.com. And if you don't have an account, please feel free to sign up for a free account. And then once you're there, let's create a new design. When it comes to a pencil holder, my kind of favorite version of the form is, of course, a pencil holder that looks like a pencil. <laughs> I just think it's funny when something's functionality directly references the thing that it is functional for. And so a pencil holder in the shape of a pencil is a great idea. In Tinkercad, this actually poses a little bit of a challenge because the pencil holder has flat sides with an around conical top. And to get the two to mesh together is a bit of a fun challenge using Tinkercad, or at least I think so. For this type of holder, we'll start with a cylinder. So by clicking on the shape you desire, it bring, makes it possible to bring it into the work plane. The shape can of course be sized any which way, but if you hold down the shift key on the keyboard, it'll size it proportionally, meaning that it will stay a perfect circle as you make it larger. So I'm gonna make it um, arbitrarily large, not too bad. So we're gonna keep it a cylinder. We're gonna make it look like a pencil on the sides later, but for now it's a perfect circle and I'm going to add a pencil top. To make it easier, I, I wanna put this cone right on top of the cylinder. And I can kind of cheat by using the work plane tool and then setting this as the new flat surface where future shapes will be added onto. So again, I'm gonna click the cone that I want to add as a shape. And instead of snapping to the bottom, instead it'll make it much easier to place on the top of the given cylinder. So I left click down to put that in position. And then again, I use the handle here to size it. So I'll hold on the shift key again, just to kind of get in rough position and then see how we're doing. One interesting thing you can do to aid in your design of a thing like this is to turn on orthographic view, which is a flat view, which will make it easier to see if your position is accurate when you're looking right on the top. This removes the perspective from your objects. And so you can see really easily if it's perfectly aligned. We'll be, stay, we'll be staying in flat view for the remainder here. Again, just to make it much easier for us to align shapes. And so, almost a pencil, almost a pencil holder. I'm gonna exaggerate this top a little bit, and I'm gonna put the work plane back onto the bottom by clicking the work plane button, and then just clicking down on the flat area of the work surface here. So, there's a lot of fun tools in Tinkercad. One of them is the tube. The tube has a rather nice ability in that it is adjustable by these different parameters. And so one of the parameters I can set is the number of sides. A pencil typically has six sides and we'll use that to our advantage here. So we can already see now it has a six sided tube. And then in addition to that, I'm gonna make the walls a little thicker. What my plan is here I'm going to use this to cut a hole out of both of these shapes in order to render it as more of a pencil style. Um, so right off the top, I'm gonna to turn that into a hole, click on any of these size squares, and then by left clicking and dragging on the size square, of course, I make it larger, hold down the shift key to keep it proportional, and then try to slide it in position. So this is where the top view comes in handy again. And so now we can see really closely um, what is gonna happen if this goes on top of each other. And even one better, let's look right at the bottom and make sure that our shape can completely cover the already existing shapes. And so here, the inside of the tube, or yes, the inside of the tube is here, the outside of the tube is there, and since it's a hole, it's gonna cut out these exterior parts of the shape. And so we can go back up here. The center dot, it involves the height of the given objects, and so I'll make the tube a little taller. 
I'm also going to exaggerate this a little further to get these nice kind of scoops, you know, nice little pencil scoops over here. Uh, lastly, we can click and drag in Tinkercad. By clicking and dragging, we open a selection box. And so this red dotted line is a selection box. Whatever it even touches um, will become selected. And so by selecting everything, I have the opportunity to be a real stickler for alignment. And so now that everything is selected, and Tinkercad shows you that you have three shapes selected, using this align tool, we can use the new dots that appear and make sure everything is centered. And so if I was going to exaggerate this further, let's say I put this over here. If I select all my shapes, go to my align tool, I can force them to be centered to each other. And so that way I know that if you are a stickler about precision, then you can be satisfied with the centering of your shapes. Okay, so hole in Tinkercad cuts things out when you group them together. So again, my selection box will encompass all these shapes. All three shapes are selected. And if I press the group button here near the top of the screen, we can do just that. And so now the cone and the cylinder have been shaved off the sides and the top of the cone remains nice and conical. And so we have a pretty good looking pencil, if I do say so myself, you know, with a little bit more editing, you can make a pretty convincing pencil. For the purpose of my pencil holder, I'm just going to kind of squish it down a little bit, make it a little chunkier. And then we have to use two more holes. In particular, we need to shave the top off here. So I'm going to go just to my regular old box pop that down anywhere. Luckily for this part, we don't have to be really too careful. We know we want to chop the top off. And to do that, you know, make a nice big box, slide it upwards into position, kind of review its general location, maybe make it even taller. By clicking the hole button here, it turns into a hole. And then again, we click and drag our selection box over all of the elements and group it together. And so again, the hole is completely destructive. It'll snip the tip in this case and leave us with a almost an opening for our pencil holder. To make it a real opening to put pencils inside, one more time, I'm gonna use the work plane trick to make this my new work plane. Just because um, I just think it's easier. I, th I think it's easier to make that the work plane, click on my cylinder, and then move it into position this way, as opposed to having to kind of move it up and down. So the work plane makes that really easy, but we can put that back where it came from. So now, you know, you might have already anticipated another hole here. I'm gonna click on the sizing handle and hold on the shift key. So again, it maintains its perfect circle. Since we're still in flat view, the top gives us a nice view of kind of where and how this would be positioned. So something like that is okay. Um, try to center it there. Again, if we're sticklers, we can select all of the object, open up my align tool, and just make sure they are perfectly centered to each other. So um, we know that the bottom of this pencil holder is the bottom of the work plane. And so if we take a look at the right side, we can move our cone down. And you see the little dotted line kind of right near the bottom as it moves up and down. That's the base of our cylinder. So we want, the, we want us to have a little bit of a base here but the rest of it um, is all encapsulated inside of our pencil holder. If we move our view, we get our nice little height size handle back. If anything happens where you kind of click away and then you're like, oh no, how do I get back to the hole that I want to change the size of? You know, you could move it out of the way, move it out of the way. That's a little messy. Instead, all you have to do is select the object that you want to be temporarily hidden and then click this little light bulb here. By hiding the object, It'll make it possible to select something that it is um, that it, the previous object covers. So you can make that taller again. And then by clicking the large light bulb, we can show all. And then we see that our hole and pencil shape have been reunited. We again use our selection box to pick up both, both of these objects and use the group tool to punch out another hole. If you've made a critical error, if you did not want the hole there, we can ungroup these objects and you can decide that you wanted it to, you know, occupy some other space perhaps. By selecting them again and regrouping them, of course, we'll just put that back where it came from. 
So, you know, just to compare to our reference image, it's a pretty snazzy pencil case if I or pencil holder, if I do say so myself. Um, you know, nothing is wrong with that. Not too shabby. If we wanted to go just a little bit further into making this a little more personal, um, we can put our name on it. And so again, the work plane tool comes to the rescue. That way we can really position this directly on one of these flat sides instead of having again to rotate it. So if, let's put it right there, let's say. Then the text tool in Tinkercad, um, just like any other object, can be selected by left clicking and then moving it over. So lucky us, it already moved it to be flat to that position, but there is one rotation to do, just move it 90 degrees. The text tool is interesting. It has, again, parameters here, one of them being the desired text. So I'll put my name on my pencil holder. When it comes to 3D printing, um, putting your name jutting out like this causes more problems in the long run uh, for the printer than you might like. And so in my case, I'm going to just kind of slide this up and then just press left and right or sorry, left and forward to kind of squish it into the pencil holder. We won't go through because there's quite a large amount of wall space here. And so just by pushing it in to the holder, we can turn this into a hole. And we can have a lot of good fun with that right there by just grouping it all together, by selecting it and grouping it all together and having an indentation into our pencil holder. This object, once you're happy with it, can be exported as an STL file. And then once you export it as an STL file, it can be um, 3D printed using any local 3D printers or sent to a print-on-demand service to get your uh, pencil holder in reality. That's all I have for you. That's the pencil holder that I would wanted to create with us today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you try your hand at making your own pencil-shaped pencil holder. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.